myself i am dn singh professor in department of civil engineering i started my career in 1994 and uh, i am continuing doing research and academic work uh, quite profusely you can write down my email address which is dns@civil.iitb.ac.in try to sort out most of the queries in the classroom or you are most welcome to communicate to me through email let's start with the overview of the course this course normally i define it as a philosophy and that to the engineering philosophy basically deals with the incorporating the influence of environmental effects in bracket you must be noticing that i write either man made or natural on conventional geo technical engineering practices the basic idea is i try to draw a simulation between what's happening in the nature and how this simulation can be done in laboratory by using different methodologies and techniques which are known to human beings or technocrats now again i would like to emphasize on the word philosophy you will find this course slightly unconventional it's not a very stereotype of a course where you expect me to give you a lot of equations and solving the problems by inputting the parameters i am sorry that's not the whole idea of this course and slowly and slowly you will discover that this course has been developed over the years particularly uh, by assimilating the information which has been given to me by my own students so it's a very interesting way in which this course has evolved and the journey continues every day every thesis every dissertation is a learning experience for me particularly and i thank my students for guiding me properly so this course is gaining significant attention of engineers researchers and planners due to rapid and uncontrolled industrialization which yields a huge amount of hazardous waste or the contaminants which normally we use as a connotation rather than talking about the hazardous waste how do you define a contaminant then that's very good can you can you dissect the word contaminants and define it further or what is the literal meaning of the word contaminants the substance which make the something not useful okay next the substance which has a tendency to contaminate other things like contaminate trying to find out the definition of contaminant <laughs> itself <laughs> yeah like yeah. which has a hazardous effects on both nature and also human life pollutants you can say okay yes please sarika uh, sir contaminants are the uh, substance uh, which uh, disturb the characteristics of uh, that su substance can say uh, and results in uh, results in some hazardous waste like good next i think contaminant is something which when comes in contact with normal uh those the standard qualities will be changed when this contaminants will be mixed so that will be uh, that will be creating harmful effects both for the environment and to the human being that's right okay next please it's a like substance which not only affects the man can but also it gives its hazardous hazardous effect on environment also good next one uh, contaminants are those materials which uh, can be which which can be man made uh, substances or uh, by naturally also but and it causes uh, harmful effect to the environment good contaminants are basically they are toxic and they affect the quality of uh, uh, environmental 
yeah so most of, most of you understand what is the meaning of word contaminants so my life and my job becomes very simple whatever you have defined these are the traits of the contaminants you are right in simplest possible words a contaminant would be a foreign material or a foreign body which tries to what spoils the basic characteristics of a system all right well so what we'll do is we'll try to study this statement again it is gaining significant attention of engineers researchers and planners due to rapid and uncontrolled industrialization i hope you will agree this is what is going on presently in the country and all over the world and this phenomena leads to a huge amount of generation of waste because waste are not needed unwanted we term them as contaminants all right now as far as the subject is concerned it's a blend of geotechnical engineering and environmental engineering and basically it deals with studies related to safe disposal and handling of the waste estimation of its spread and fate in the subsurface method to contain its spread in the subsurface and some schemes which you can derive for remediation of the contaminated land so what you'll notice is the scope of the study or the subject is too much what i'll try to do here is i may not go into the details of each and every step which i have talked about here i'll just try to give you the basic idea about what is the genesis of the subject which we are trying to study and what are its applications or implementations but truly speaking all these things should be borne in mind when we talk about the subject and that's how i say that the overview of the subject deals with so many facets this subject also encompasses safe transportation and disposal and development of suitable strategy for proper utilization of the waste now this is where the concepts of recycling reuse reapplication of the waste is coming in focus these days apart from a discussion on these issues this course highlights the importance and relevance of revising the basic concepts of geotechnical engineering so as to deal with the concerns raised by these issues in the most befitting manner this is something very tricky and this is where actually i spend most of my time in explaining that how the two concepts one is which is slightly i would say old concept is going to get modified by the new concepts or the new concepts which we put into the practice to solve most of the problems which we are dealing with in day to day life so the basic aim of the study which we are going to do is to get some solutions to the problems which exist in nature and which are of severe importance to the mankind or the society or the nation or the world as such in addition to this the course focuses on pointing out the role and importance of the parameters and mechanisms that govern interaction of contaminants with geomaterials now this would be a slightly new word or terminology for you most of the time we talk about interaction how two things are going to you know communicate with each other now this is what is the meaning of interaction is literally so most of the time i would like to bring you back or your attention to the fact that how we are going to simulate the interaction of two systems one could be a contaminant another one could be a porous system or a geomaterial so truly speaking enough emphasis is given here to understand how a porous system is going to interact with contaminants now when you talk about this type of interaction if the interaction happens to be prolonged the tendency of the system is to get degraded so this is where the second step comes into the picture after interaction the interaction or prolonged interaction in leads to degradation so the degradation due to the presence of chemicals or radionuclides in undesirable concentrations and at elevated temperatures in the long run so when we will discuss about the attributes of the contaminants what we will notice is 
that apart from the chemical activity a contaminant can have radioactivity associated with it or concentration of chemicals and that too at elevated temperatures. So, you think of a situation where you have three components of or three attributes of the contaminants like temperature, too much of radioactivity, too much of chemical concentration and how these three parameters are going to influence the interaction of this contaminant with the porous system which happens to be geomaterial. Now, interestingly this interaction can be defined or can be quantified with the help of concepts of mechanics. So, the studies which you have done till now related to soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering using them as the base I will add on the top bit of concepts related to how to model a certain mechanism. So, this becomes environmental geomechanics that means we are going to study how the influences of environmental factors can be encompassed or studied or can be imbibed, imbibed in the system in the most you know unique way or in the most appropriate manner. So, here few words are very important as I said the first one is interaction, the second one is prolonged interaction may result in degradation and the attributes of the chemicals or the contaminants where we talked about three things concentration, temperature, radioactivity and so on and of course, we talk about this phenomena to take place in a prolonged manner that is the long run. However, as contaminant geomaterial interaction is an extremely slow process and a complex process and this primarily depends on the physical, chemical and mineralogical properties of the system it is quite difficult to study this interaction under laboratory or in situ conditions. These are some new words which I am coining over here. I hope the contaminant geometrical interaction part is clear to you. Now, when we talk about this interaction, it is a very slow process even if you talk about the migration of water which is nothing but the seepage or hydraulic conductivity. The hydraulic conductivities of geomaterials are very very small 10 power minus 7, 10 power minus 8, 10 power minus 12, 10 to minus 14 meter per second and so on. And then slowly and slowly we will see that there are few mechanisms which are going to be much slower than this mechanism or the mechanism of seepage of water or a fluid to the system diffusion is one of them. So, there could be a situation where diffusion takes over the seepage process or advection process. I hope right now you might not be able to envisage that what type of situation this would be, but just to give you an example for the uh, for the for the sake of completeness if you think of salt water migration or salt water intrusion where the contaminant transport mechanism is mostly going to be a diffusion process not the advection process. So, this is where actually we talk about extremely slow processes which are very complex in nature and which primarily depend on the physical properties of the system, chemical properties of the system and mineralogical properties of the system. Now, this is a very holistic approach which we are talking about that means, till now people have been talking about only physical characteristics forgetting what is the chemical characteristic and the mineralogical characteristic of the contaminant geomaterial system. Though it is a very difficult task, but then this type of interaction has to be simulated first in the laboratory, so that the generalized models can be developed and hence we can prove what is going on in the laboratory whether it is commensurating with the facts or the phenomena which govern in the nature. So, this is where actually we require different modeling techniques. So, certain part of the course I will be devoting on studying or telling you how to model these mechanism by adopting the latest techniques such as accelerated physical modeling. I am sure you must be doing a course on centrifuge modeling also which is nothing but accelerated physical modeling using a geotechnical centrifuge, finite element difference based numerical modeling techniques and another new concept is if you want to study how a geomaterial gets degraded over a period of time because of its interaction with the contaminants 
we can talk about the physico chemical mineralogical modeling so this would be something very interesting and unique which i would like to cover in this course any questions how it is going solid theek hai so there is one question now here uh, you said that basically degradation of the geo material but uh, in conventional geo technical engineering we study soil stabilization so where we add something to uh, so can we say that this concepts of this environmental geo mechanics also uh, they have the genesis from the soil stabilization or that is the positive effect now we are studying basically the negative effect of this material it's a very good question again a very thought provoking question any answer from the audience here seema it's a philosophical question so it requires a philosophical answer one capsule of medicine is a medicine but more than a certain dose becomes a poison i don't know whether it is correct to this analogy or not when you talk about stabilization the concentration of chemicals which you are inputting in the system are controlled but when we talk about interaction of contaminants with porous system the concentration and the hazardicity of the waste is beyond control so i hope you can now correlate the things if the doses are controlled it's a stabilization process well monitored process is going to lead to a good stabilization process however if the concentrations and attributes are quite you know extreme or very high then what happens in that case this becomes a case of environmental or geomaterial degradation this is what is to my knowledge any addition to this yes please i'd like to add something please feel free to interact your interaction is very important than the contaminant geo material interaction i also want to one more question i want to ask you that is i understand phys, uh, f- i mean you have used the word physico chemico mineralogical modeling techniques i understand physico means it refers to the characterization of soil that tests we do but what type of test we generally do for chemico and mineralogical modeling how we do that just a brief so seema's question is that what is essentially meant by physico chemico mineralogical modeling techniques everybody understands what is meant by physical characterization of the material that is you first work out the particle size distribution the specific gravity surface area shape of the particles angularity of the particles and so on so this is very well understood phenomena in geo mechanics all of you must have done experiments to classify a soil your classification schemes are based on physical classification only you come out of it a bit when you talk about etabug limits it's a add on to the physical process how you add water to soil all right and then you try to understand what is the activity of the minerals which are present in it so this is where the importance of minerals comes into the picture i will be talking about the mineralogical uh, characterization of materials also in this course a bit normally we conduct x ray fluorescence techniques which is known as xrf and xrd to find out the chemical composition of the soil mass or the geomaterial or mineralogical composition by conducting xrd that is x ray diffraction technique i'll be discussing about these things some of the other chemical attributes of the material can be determined by conducting test like ph measurement in the pore solution or cation exchange capacity that is cec or zeta potential of the soil mass and so on anything which i have missed out so normally we talk about ph cation exchange capacity zeta potential of the soil of course sulfate chloride which are present in the system and so on so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to work on a model 
which talks about the totality of the material properties that is the physical properties, chemical properties and mineralogical properties. Another part of your question should have been that why these properties are so important to be studied. Now if you remove the chemical and mineralogical aspects of the geomaterial, it becomes a passive soil. So what is the difference between a clay with kaolin and a clay which is having more of montmolonite or bentonite in itself. That means chemically they are different and mineralogically they are different. So this is why actually it is important to study the overall properties of the geomaterials and then try to see how these properties are going to attribute their impact on you know the answers which you are trying to get. Is this okay? Yes please. Sorry. What are the agents which can accelerate the interaction of geometry and, and uh, yeah, contaminants? Yes, this again like, uh, very good question. He is asking your name, please. Shiva Prakash. Shiva Prakash. Shiva Prakash is asking a question that what are the parameters which may accelerate this interaction? How would you behave when the temperatures are very high outside? So you just understand that we are the living entity, soil is also a living entity, rocks are also living entity in a geological time frame and all of us behave in a similar manner okay, whether it is exposed to the temperature, humidity or the pressure. So any phenomena, any interaction which takes place in this world which happens to be a physical phenomena has to be guided by temperature pressure and what else humidity. Now if you keep these three parameters in your mind you will and go back to the rock cycle how soils are formed. So this gives you an easy answer to understand that because of humidity because of weathering the soils were formed is it not. So all these interactions will get influenced by the parameters temperature pressure humidity activity of different types which are available in nature like as, as a civil engineer we never bothered about the bioactivity which is present in the soil mass. We always believed in taking out a sample bringing it to the lab remolding it and then doing the modeling and getting some parameters which fail miserably when you do a modeling in the nature or in the field. Why? Because we have ignored their the effect of bioactivity, the microbial activity, the climatic conditions which are going to exist and so on it is a big list. So I will try to answer this question slowly and slowly but please excuse me because as I said the, the course happens to be so big and so large it is very difficult to cover in one course, one, one, one semester. So you keep on asking the question the best way is I think most of the doubts for both of us can be cleared okay. Is this okay with you or you have another doubt? Yes please. Sir, actually you have mentioned that physico, chemical and mineralogical modeling techniques, right? Sir, like uh, in the chemical, like com like it means the water content present in the soil and all, like they will be altered when they have an interaction with a, like some hazardous materials and all. But how will these physical characteristics of the soil be affected by those? Like actually they will be generally affected by like uh, the shape, size and angularity, they will be affected due to that uh, pressure conditions and weathering and all but how will they be affected by very good question one part of the question you already answered the second part is in the simplest form how shape is going to attribute to the activity of the material what is the difference between sands and clays when you say surface area of sands is very less and surface area of clay minerals is very high okay I hope this answers your question that means there is a very distinct relationship between the physical attribute which happens to be a surface area or specific surface area of each mineral and each material in fact each fraction of the soil also clear this is one of the answer. The second answer would be what guides the specific gravity of the material shape okay. So if shape is or if the particle size is very small the specific gravity is going to be more. Similarly we talk about porosity and so on which will fall in line slowly 
I hope this answers your part of the question. Okay. What was the second part of your question? They be getting affected by this chemical action also. Yeah. Well, the chemistry is the mother of all sciences. People say. So when you talk about the chemical attributes, you must have noticed in your food plate you like to have different types of variety. Why? Something is sweet, something is sour, something is salty, something is less salty, something is spicy. What is this? This is nothing but the chemical compositions are different. Clear? And if you take them together, it affects your digestion system. If you don't take something in proper proportion, something is going to get affected. Similarly, you think of the soils which are made up of pure silica. Now, silica is a passive material; it's not going to react with anything. So, you keep on pouring any amount of contaminants on silica. the net result would be not much it will not get affected much however if you take clays which may have a different composition different oxides different mineralogy and if they come in contact with chemicals you will notice slowly and slowly when we discuss these issues which come under the sorption desorption techniques that they have a great affinity towards chemical species all right a good example of this type of a question or good answer to this type of question would be why do you use some typical clays as a cleansing agent for your body good example is multani mitti it's nothing but bentonite why don't you use sands for cleansing your skin so sands will give you more scrubbing effect while the clay has more cation exchange effect so what it does is it takes out the cations from your body in the form of sweat and what is sweat so it is nothing but all the chemicals which are oozing out of the skin so this is a good example of how physico chemical mineralogical interactions are going to govern the overall process of waste coming in contact with geo materials yes please any other question doubts if you don't agree please let me know and you answer someone can take the charge of answering the questions Okay 